Welcome back, everyone. Eric here, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. You've already clicked the subscribe button over here. You've already turned on notifications, so you're in the know. And today we're talking about 15 meters, the 15 meter band. So we've already touched on 10 meters and 12 meters, moved on to 15. And 15 is a good band. I like 15 because it seems that I've had good luck with it. Uh, 15 can be a little bit flaky. It, it, we're starting to move closer to 20 meters. So I'm sure every person that's interested in ham radio or HF has heard of 20 meters. And 20 meters sometimes can get crowded, but everybody thinks 20 meters is the only place you're going to have DX, and that's not true. 15 meters offers a great band with great conditions that can be had all year round. Um, probably better conditions in the summer, but it can happen in the winter. It can happen even after the sun goes down, and it can happen mobile. So 15 meters is a great DX band, a great stateside band, a great local band, and we'll check it out right now. 15 meters. So taking a look at 15 meters here. Now 15 looks a little bit different than the last ones we looked at because now you have to study and pay attention to what privileges you have based on the class of license you have. For instance, a novice or a technician limits to 200 watts and CW only in the 15 meter band. That could be good for someone who's a tech who hasn't upgraded the general yet and they're brushing up on their CW skills. They want to do some QRP on CW. You can do it here from 21025 to 21200. Now, if you're a general like I am, you're only authorized, well, I say only, you're, you're authorized most of the phone portion from 21275 to 21450. But you can see the advanced and the extra have more band privileges than a general does. However, let's say I'm a general and you were an extra, or let's say I was an extra and you're a general and you're at my house, I'm the control operator, you can actually use my radio and talk on extra class privileges because I would be an extra in your presence and you'd be a general. That's something to consider when you're um, with another ham who has a higher license than you, given that he is the control operator, meaning he's responsible for what's going on with the radio. Um, and that happens a lot when we go to field day events and other uh, events with the W4OT club call. I can operate extra class band only as a general because I'm in the presence of like 15 different extra class operators at the table, so I can operate extra. It, for me, it doesn't bother me. I'm not an extra. A little more bandwidth, yeah, but it's no problem for me. There's plenty of people on general class, and down here in the lower portion of the band, there's plenty of digital modes, probably more digital modes here than you would see on 12 and 10. So you'll see FT8, PSK31, RIDI, Olivia, Contestia, all kinds of digital modes here in the beginning portion of the band, as well as CW, beacons for, repeat, uh, for reception, beacons for propagation, excuse me, and uh, a lot of activity going on in 15. To explain 15 meters a little bit, instead of showing you a graph, I can show you here on dxmaps.com. This is just a propagation report, you know, based on people inputting it into the map with spots. Now, with 15 meters, we're starting to move closer to 20 meters. So 15 meters has some of the characteristics of 20 meters, but can be a little flaky sometimes. By that, I mean 15 meters is primarily in the day, but can have some nighttime propagation. And also, it's not just in the peak of summer, like 10 and 12 would be. This is January right now, and there's some activity on 15 meters. If I go to list, you can see people are doing CW, RIDI, Whisper, FT8, digital, some more RIDI. So in the middle of, in the beginning of January, 15 meters approaching uh, 6 o'clock at night is, is still active. Where if I go to 12 meters, nothing here. 10 meters, really nothing here, contact over here. So you can see here, we're moving towards 20. Now, 20 meters, the next video will show you 
uh, you know, if you look at 20 meters, if you go up from 20 meters, 17, 15, 12, 10, it's more of a summer daytime band. And if you go lower than 20 meters, it's more of a nighttime winter band. But we're going to get into that, so you got to stay tuned and watch the videos. So 15 meters, definitely usable. Um, some days it's open for days at a time. Some days it's not open at all for several days, uh, some weeks rather. 15 meters can be flaky, but definitely an active band with propagation sometimes better with further distances than 20 meters. So sometimes 20, you may not get DX to Europe or South America, but 15 may open up for you at the same time and give you a better range of DX. Let's see how long a simple dipole would be for 15 meters. If I did 21.325 megahertz, uh, we're looking at 22 feet, roughly 21 and 11.4 inches end to end for a half wave simple wire dipole that you can build for practically nothing. Element length, one side, 10 foot, almost 11. So it's not that long yet. When you're talking about an 80 meter off center fed dipole at 135 feet, this doesn't seem too bad at 22, right? You can get this up in the air and get on the radio uh, without spending a ton of money on a huge antenna for 15. Someone mentioned in previous videos, they said, Eric, you keep mentioning wire dipoles for 10 meters and 12 meters. What about Yagi or a beam or a Moxon or a vertical? Yes, that's absolutely correct. You can have a, uh, in fact, I had a beam one time. It was a uh, high gain Thunderbird Jr. And it did 10, 15 and 20 meters. So we're talking simple right now. We're talking cheap getting on the air as a newly licensed ham with the simplest antenna. You don't have to spend tons of money to do this stuff. That's what I want everybody to understand. You may see people with a lot of gear on their tables when they're making videos. I never really show mine. I got an HF radio, a two meter radio, and an antenna rotator for my six meter beam. And I can do all I want on HF. So We'll get into that stuff in the future about moxins and verticals and yaggies and stuff like that. For now, we're just touching on each band one at a time to show you that a 15 meter yaggy is not that long. It's, I mean, a 15 meter dipole, excuse me, is not that long. It's 22 feet. When you put that in comparison to a 160 meter wire, well, you'll see what happens when we get to that video. But I hope it's good informative information for you so far. Now, 15 meters, what you can find on there is good DX. A lot of DX operators on 15, a lot of seasoned operators on 15. Not so many nets and the same people on the same band, on the same frequency at the same time every night. That's not what I usually see. There are, a, it's everyone out there is to please, uh, to do what they please, but I see more action. You know, some of the action and content of 20 meters put on the 15. So 15 is a great band um, when people say, oh, 20 is where it's at, 20 is where it's at. There's a lot to be had on 15, and uh, it can be a really good band for you if you want to check that out. So thanks for watching, 7-3. More on the way. Stay tuned, stay subscribed, and 7-3 from KJ4YZI.